How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Tuesday here on this program, and you know what that means. We got Monday Night Raw to talk about here in a little while. That should be very exciting. So that's going to be later on in the program. But until then, we got a lot to get into here today, including what's going on with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Today at noon Eastern, Steve Austin accepted Kevin Owens' challenge to come on to the KO show at uh, WrestleMania. So I got a lot to say about that one there and also uh, the rest of this WrestleMania lineup that we know thus far. Right now we got five matches for night one. We have five matches for night two. And we have many more matches to be announced. We got an update on Becky Lynch. And actually in about an hour... Lance Storm is going to be on the show, and uh, we're going to talk to him about Becky Lynch because it is possible that uh, Lance Storm and Becky Lynch uh, suffered the same injury. Uh, Lance a few years ago in a match with Christian and Becky Lynch on Sunday, and uh, if, in fact, she suffered the same injury that he did, that is, in fact, a potentially fatal injury. So hopefully she—they claim she's good to go for WrestleMania— so I guess we'll we'll find out soon enough. But she was hospitalized. She was backstage at Raw, so I'm presuming she will be good to go. But we have updates on the Hall of Fame. We have updates on Dynamite coming up on Wednesday. SmackDown ratings, Rampage ratings, Kane, Velazquez, and much, much more. Mike Sembervivi not joining us here today. He's been fired. He actually hasn't been fired. He's uh, got a personal issue to tend to today. So I'm going solo, which means you... Can be the co-host here today. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. A lot to get into after the break. Stick around. Wrestling Observer Live. Not a serious family issue. I think it's car-related, if I recall. So for those of you concerned, that's the that's the update. But I would like to wish a very happy birthday today to Thunder Rosa, 25 years old. A big happy birthday to her. Hey! Did you guys hear about Stone Cold Steve Austin? Well, Stone Cold Steve Austin is officially coming to WrestleMania 38. On Monday's Raw, Kevin Owens called out Austin to appear on the KO show at night one of WrestleMania 38. WWE then posted a video today with Austin accepting Owens' challenge. Whether you want to call this a KO show, a match, a fight, a brawl, whatever, I will guarantee you this, Austin said. In Dallas, Texas where I started my career at WrestleMania. Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to open up one last can of whoop-ass on you, Kevin Owens, and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Leading into WrestleMania, Owens has been trash-talking him. Dave Meltzer reported over the weekend that while Owens versus Austin had been discussed as a match for WrestleMania, it is now on the books as a confrontation. Quote, they will have a confrontation, but it is not clear... If that will be a match or not anymore, said Dave. It's essentially up to Austin at this point. They want the match. They thought they had the match. And Steve, well, there's a reason he hasn't wrestled in 19 years. I know that as of Friday, he had not agreed to do the match, even though it was on the books. Now it is on the books as a confrontation. So, you know, over the weekend... Over the weekend, I... I heard a lot of... Guff from fans on the internet. You guys know how the internet is. And uh, boy, were they angry that, uh, oh my God, it was re- it was reported that Steve Austin was going to have a match with Kevin Owens, and it was reported that it was Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. And now it's it's Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory, and it's it's Steve Austin and Kevin Owens in a confrontation. Oh, these, these reporters, they're horrible at their job, blah, blah, blah. So it's time for me to, uh, you know, what's the term for just, uh, you know, it's not mansplaining, as I explain it to, because uh, it's not like, you know, it's just, I'm trying to explain this to really stupid people that don't understand anything. And here's the thing with with uh, with dumb people on the internet. So I'm sure that you all have friends, and they they just can never, they can never be wrong, even when they are. You know those kind of people? Hate people like that. So... Let's say, for example, that uh, you have a friend 
and uh, and he believes that the Earth is flat. Okay, and then he he goes, you know, Elon Musk. He wins a lottery and he's got like a lot of money, and so he decides he's going to go on a on a rocket ship with Elon Musk, and they fly up into the the sky, and uh, and he looks down and by God, the Earth is round. Well, a guy like that's going to come back down to Earth and he's going to go, it's flat. Yeah. It's a disc. It's a flat, round disc. And he's just going to stick with it till the day he dies. Cause he just, so when you're a uh, journalist, so to speak, or a, a reporter, what your job is is to uh, tell everyone what the story is. And uh, I'm going to explain to you how this works in WWE, okay? Now, this, as a journalist, I'm going to tell you, I don't know this for sure, okay? But I have, I have uh, been given the impression by a, a, a pretty good source that, in fact, uh, Steve Austin had not officially agreed to even do WrestleMania until, like, a couple of days ago. I mean, it was very, very recently. So you'll notice that, like, Steve Austin kept talking about Texas, all right? But uh, they didn't announce Steve Austin until yesterday, because I think that Steve Austin just very recently actually signed the deal, okay? So when you're putting together a WrestleMania card and, uh, and you know, guy hasn't officially agreed yet, what you have to do is you have to put the card together and you have to get to work on, on WrestleMania. And uh, what they had, what they had on their internal, like, schedule lineup for WrestleMania was Steve Austin versus Kevin Owens. Because their working idea was to do a match with Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. Now, once you write that down on the piece of paper, now you got to go to Steve Austin. you got to try and get everything worked out. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, we want you to work. Well, you know, I don't know if I want to work. Well, you know, uh, here's how much we'll, we'll pay you to uh, work. I'm not working for that. Okay, well, you know, we're willing to give you this. You know, there's negotiations, and it goes back and forth. And at the end of the day, what they wanted was Steve Austin versus Kevin Owens in a wrestling match. And what they're going to get is Steve Austin on the Kevin Owens show at WrestleMania. And he's going to stun the guy half to death, and they're going to do whatever they're going to do. And that's what happened. The same thing happened with Vince McMahon and Pat McAfee. When they put together their internal lineup for WrestleMania, what it said was Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. Okay? Now... What is it at this at this moment? What is it? Well, at this moment, it is Austin Theory versus Pat McAfee. We still have several weeks to WrestleMania, and uh, my impression is that uh, if you think that Vince McMahon is not going to be involved in this match, probably even to a, a physical degree, well, uh, there's a lot of time left. And so I do believe that, uh, you know, what they had listed on their uh, original lineup sheet is going to be different than what you're going to get at WrestleMania. But uh, I do believe that Vince is going to be uh, in the ring in some fashion and probably doing something physical. Uh, that could all change. But, you know, the, the job of a, a journalist or a reporter is to tell you the story as the story evolves okay and uh and that changes and it changes not just in wrestling but in in real life you know there's a reason that there's um i almost said a bad word uh batty crazy conspiracy theories is because uh, oftentimes when an event occurs a a traumatic event uh moments after it occurs you hear all sorts of information and the information goes out on Twitter, and the information goes out on the news, and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, maybe there's, for example, a, uh, a shooting. I hate to use that, but perhaps there's a shooting somewhere. And the initial reports are that there were several shooters. And, uh, you know, this goes out, and then a few hours later, it turns out there actually weren't several shooters. There was only a shooter. Well, the, the folks that heard the original report, well, now they're sticking to it. No, you said there were, there were multiple. Now you're claiming there's one. Well, there were multiple, and there's a cover-up, and then it explodes from there. Because people don't understand that 
Stories change, information changes, memories change, and people's people's report, everything changes. And a journalist's job is to track the changes and tell you what happened at any given time. Not stick with the story. So anyway, that's what's happening at this point at WrestleMania. That is the, the update on the show. We have got uh, Charlotte versus Ronda, Becky versus Bianca, Stone Cold on the Kevin Owens show. Ray and Dominic uh, versus The Miz and Logan Paul, and Drew McIntyre, Happy Corbin. That's night one. Night two, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, Pat McAfee and Austin Theory, Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville, AJ and Edge, Queen, Zelina, and Carmella against Sasha, Naomi, Rhea Ripley, and Liv Morgan in a triple threat match for the tag team titles. And damn it, Seth Rollins can't get a match at WrestleMania. He's definitely not going to be on this show. Or you can wait a week, and we'll probably find out what he's going to do on the show. Now, do I know what he's going to do on the show? No, I don't know for sure what he's going to do on the show. But you know what? Seth Rollins is on WrestleMania. And I think we're going to find out his opponent coming up next Monday on Raw. We'll talk about this and more after the break. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. 425 780 7566. Back in a moment. Observer Live. But you can join us. 425 780 7566. This is your chance, free, to ask me a question and get an answer here on the air. You don't even have to pay the $35 you'd pay for a cameo at 4W Online. But if you have $35, there's no better value for your $35. I can tell you that. You have a birthday coming up? You have a friend have a birthday? You got somebody you want to bury? You got somebody in your trampoline wrestling federation that hasn't won a match since August? And you want me to rip them to shreds? Have 4W Online on Cameo. That's the good stuff. On this show for free, you get stuff like this. Where have Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford been? Specifically with Kip, it feels like forever since we've seen him. Well, he's been at the grocery store. Okay, before we get into the rest of the news here, I want to mention that tonight on the Brian and Vinny and Craig and Granny show, it is, in fact, our ode, our ode to Rob Bartlett edition of the show. We are reviewing Raw 13 on Peacock, the final ever episode that Rob Bartlett was a part of, and we will celebrate his career tonight on the Brian and Vinny show. We've got songs flooding in for the song contest. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, 30 seconds or less, MP3. We have got poetry... Rob Bartlett Poetry. We're going to review this horrible episode of Raw, Raw 13, and a wretched edition of the show. We're going to dress up like Rob Bartlett, and you can celebrate it with us if you are a Twitch homie or a top-tier YouTube subscriber. Not free. You must pay for the ode to Rob Bartlett. So you can uh, either sign up to our YouTube channel, click Join. You get uh, all of the shows live and replays. Or uh, twitch.tv slash F4W video, which actually is the easiest because that one's A, $4.99. And if you don't have $4.99, use your Amazon Prime account and you sign up for free. Amazon Prime subscribers get a free, free Twitch subscription every month. So you go to twitch.tv slash F4W video, you go to sign up. It says use Prime account. You click yes and you are signed up. And you can watch the ode. To Rob Bartlett here tonight. And please sign up, because it ain't going to be cheap to get one of these Rob Bartlett jackets from 1993. Or those expensive aviators he always wore. But that's coming up tonight on the program. Now, Becky Lynch announced on social media she would not be on Raw due to a fractured voice box. Lynch wrote on Instagram, injury took place at a WWE house show. In Allentown, Pennsylvania on Sunday. Blamed it on Bianca Belair, who she is currently feuding with. Unfortunately, I will not be at Raw tonight, she said. Not only did Bianca whip me mercilessly with the illegal weapon that is her hair last week, but last night in the main event of Allentown, she tried to take away my biggest weapon, the spoken word, by fracturing my voice box. So she was hospitalized on Sunday night. She was released from the hospital. She was at Raw... So they're claiming 
that she should be back in a week or two and she will be good for WrestleMania. Lance Storm is going to be on the show. Four uh, top-tier YouTube subscribers, by the way. Two Pacific, five Eastern today. Lance was once working. Christian, of all people. Who, by the way, would be on my list of folks that I would want to have a match with. Till I found out about this. And Christian threw a lariat and kablammy. He took Lance's head off and broke his hyoid bone, I believe. And uh, that can be a fatal injury. So anyway, we're going to uh, talk to Lance about that today on the show and uh, find out what his recovery was like. And uh, I don't know for sure that she broke her hyoid bone, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hear from Lance this afternoon. That and a number of other topics as well. Several factors may cause some WWE Hall of Fame inductees to be inducted digitally during the live ceremony this year. Can you imagine going into the WWE Hall of Fame and not even like being on TV or anything like that? They're just inducting you digitally. Dave reported on Observer Radio it may not be possible to induct everyone on the live shows they've done in the past due to the event only being 90 minutes. A considerable amount of that 90 minutes expected to be devoted to The Undertaker's induction. You don't say... Said in some cases, inductees could be inducted digitally. Wasn't specific on whether that means a short video speech or just a video package for certain people in acts. You know, I got an idea. Certainly not my company. Don't know if you've noticed. But what if, for the Hall of Fame this year, you only inducted two people? The Undertaker and Vader. Because for those of you that are unaware... The American Airlines Center is hosting SmackDown and the Hall of Fame, but not on separate days. It's the same night. You buy your ticket, and you get to watch the go-home SmackDown and the Hall of Fame afterwards. So why not just run SmackDown, induct Undertaker, and induct Vader, and be done with it? Because I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but... uh, You know, there's a finite number of people that can go into the WWE Hall of Fame. And I don't want to mention any names, of course, but, uh, you know, in recent years, we have scraped the bottom of the barrel in in certain cases. So, you know, instead of inducting 12 people every year, and like three years from now, there's literally nobody left to induct unless you're just going to induct anybody who's ever worked for the company, which, I mean, if you want to, you can do that. But uh, why not induct less people? Wouldn't that be the the easiest solution? You think those fans that are paying for uh, uh, SmackDown in the Hall of Fame, you think they're going to leave and be angry because they got a two-hour go-home SmackDown and the Undertaker's induction into the Hall of Fame and Vader? You think they're going to go, man, you know, I wish that, uh, you know, don't want to mention any names. Virgil. I'm really upset I didn't get the Virgil induction. Not to mention, they didn't even get him anyway. Because the show's 90 minutes. So if they induct 15 people, I mean, the live crowd's not going to get it anyway. So why would why not save some of these people for next year? Or the year after, the year after? Whatever. If I mention not my show, it's definitely not my show. How many people have inducted the Hall of Awesome? Not a lot. I don't, I don't have a quota. I don't have a certain number I induct on every show. When you're awesome, you go in. That's it. New segment has been announced for Dynamite. Following his defeat to Eddie Kingston at Sunday's Revolution pay-per-view, Chris Jericho will address Kingston on Dynamite. On his Instagram account Monday, he said he was going to do this segment. So that means that on Wednesday, we have... A TNT championship match with Sammy Guevara and Scorpio Sky. The winner of that match is going to face Wardlow at the St. Patrick's Day Slam. Now, according to Dave, they got big plans for Scorpio Sky. And I would not be surprised if Scorpio Sky won the title from Sammy Guevara. Otherwise, he's got Sammy Guevara and Wardlow at uh, at St. Patrick's Day Slam. And uh, who wins that match? Are you going to have Wardlow win the TNT title? You could do that. Or do you have, you're have? not going to have Sammy beat him. Now's not the time for Sammy to beat Wardlow. Uh, you could, you could, uh, there's a lot of things you could do. But I would not be surprised if we did Babyface Heel, Scorpio, and Wardlow. And MJF can cost Wardlow the match. There's a lot of things you can do for that match coming up uh, 
at St. Patrick's Day Slam. And then we have Thunder Rosa and Layla Hirsch, number one contenders match for the women's title, which I wish they'd done a better job explaining that one because Layla Hirsch was the number one contender. And then Thunder Rosa is getting a number one contenders match immediately after losing a championship match. So I presume that Thunder Rosa wins. I presume we do a cage match uh, for the women's title with her versus Britt, and she beats Britt on her birthday in her hometown. Did you know that? Yeah. And Chris Jericho will address Eddie Kingston on the program. We had uh, we had SmackDown and Rampage ratings. SmackDown, 2.261 million viewers, which was up 7% from the previous week. Now, these people don't care about war or nothing. They just want their wrestling. Topped all of television, 0.59 in 18 to 49, up 3.5% from the previous week's show. Second highest rating in the demo for any WWE programming since October 1 of last year. Show also topped all network programming with a 0.37 rating in 18 to 34. However, that was second on television, trailing an NBA game on ESPN. Rampage also up 545,000 viewers, up 15.2%, 0.22 rating, which is up 0.22, up 22.2% from the prior week's episode. So I guess Rampage viewers, they were over war this week as well. Ratings up across every age group, except for people over 50. We're at a 0.19. Biggest increase came in 18 to 34. Rampage drew a 0.13, which is up 116.7% from the week prior. What were those folks doing last week? They weren't watching Rampage. I can tell you that much. And we also have this former UFC heavyweight champion, occasional pro wrestler Cain Velasquez. Denied bail on Monday in his attempted murder case. So I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. None of that. Not part of a jury. But uh, I don't think this is going to end well for Cain Velasquez. I think that for people that are expecting, like, he's going to have a, you know, a lenient jury or anything. I don't know about this one. Because he was denied bail because the Superior Court judge felt he was it was too risky to let him out on bail because of the extreme recklessness to human life and the alleged actions that put him there to begin with. So him shooting into a car with uh, two other people, I don't know if he's going to uh, get off easy, as some people are, are thinking. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Live, no Mike Sempervivi here today. I think he was just trying to get out of watching Raw. That's what I think. But you know who did watch Raw? Me! And it's time for the weekly Raw report. And actually, the show, this was not the worst show. In fact, the first hour of the show, I would go as far as to say, was pretty great. I can't say it was totally great, because uh, there was so much. Like, the opening match was a triple threat tag team match. Randy Orton and Riddle versus Alpha Academy, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins, three-way match. And uh, the match, the good news is the match got 27 minutes, and it was a great match. And we got a title change. Uh, The bad news, if you want to call it that, is uh, somehow this took up the entire, entire hour of the show was uh, built around this match. So they opened up with clips of Roman Reigns attacking Brock Lesnar at uh, Madison Square Garden, which they showed multiple times here on the show, which uh, I guess was like a big angle. You know, he beat the guy up. I feel like we've seen that a million times. But they showed that. And then Owens and Rollins made their entrance. Owens and Rollins did a promo. Alpha Academy came out. Alpha Academy did a promo. Riddle and Randy Orton did a promo. Riddle and Randy Orton made an entrance. Then we got a 27-minute match, and then after that, we had an interview with Orton and Riddle, and uh, that was it. The, the entire first hour was built around this segment. So, did I like it? Yes. Was it a really good first hour? Yes. Was it like a whole bunch of useless stuff as well? Yes. You gotta take the good with the bad when you watch Raw. The match itself, great match. Chad, uh, Chad Gable was uh, was everyone in this match. I should say was was fantastic. And probably the highlight was 
Chad Gable goes up to do the big Kurt Angle style moonsault, and Randy Orton hits him with the RKO out of midair. It was perfectly timed. It was so awesome. And Randy Orton, by the way, Randy Orton was hurt last week when he got squished with that frog splash. Not a serious injury, but bro, that guy got smashed. And uh, that was that was a legitimate injury, but he was back here for this match, and they ended up uh, winning the tag team titles. Uh, Owens and Rollins did the big super kick party. Rollins gave uh, Chad Gable a buckle bomb. Owens hit the stunner. Rollins hit the curb stomp. And then Riddle tossed Rollins out of the ring, stole the pin. They won the tag team titles. This place went absolutely crazy for these guys. And for those of you that don't know the story, if you didn't listen to Observer Radio last night, when they first got together, there was like a charisma to these two guys. It was, they, they clearly were great together. But I watched it, and I predicted, and I think most people predicted, you know, Randy Orton's going to turn on this guy in like a week. And I argued strongly against that because we had, it was so clear we had something here. And uh, as as Randy Orton noted in an interview, that was the plan. The plan was that we're going to get together and break up like a week later. Well, turns out somebody with a brain decided, my God, this actually is, it's new, it's good, it's fun, the fans like it. And so they went with it. And I think, I don't know this one for sure, but I would bet you anything that when they went with it, the idea was, we're going to break them up and they're going to do a match at WrestleMania. And I suppose that could still happen, but, I mean, when this match was over, Randy Orton did this promo and he said, I've been here 20 years and I have never had as much fun as I'm having right now. And I'm going to say the F word here on television. I don't think I've ever said it before, ever in WWE. But this guy, this Matt Riddle, he's my friend. And Matt Riddle's almost in tears in the background. And the place just goes crazy because, by God, we have baby faces who are friends. And they went crazy. And I thought, dude, you got a lot of life left in this thing. Like, don't end it now. But as soon as Randy Orton called the guy his friend, I was like, I don't know if they're breaking up before Mania, but one of these days, one of these days. But this match was great. Randy was great. I loved this entire first segment. Now we had uh, Reggie and Dana backstage, and uh, Reggie wanted a, a good luck kiss, or Dana wanted a good luck kiss, so he gave it to her. And then Tozawa wants a good luck kiss from Tamina, and she violently kissed him. This coming off when she kissed him last week. So then we had Dana against Tamina after like six months of build. And uh, remember they built up the breakup of Wardlow and MJF for two years and it happened in like people around the country and theaters and bars and pay-per-view. They all went crazy. Well, we've been building this one up for months and no one cared literally one bit about it. I don't even think, I don't even think probably like Dana's parents were watching. So they do this match. They get a whopping one minute for the 24-7 title. Uh, Dana pins her, and then uh, she bails. And then Tozawa wants a kiss. He says, Tamina, you're the love of my life. I want a kiss. And she won't kiss him. And he has to look sad. And the announcers have to talk about how poor Tozawa, he just can't get a kiss. And I'm like, he just got one! Two weeks in a row he got a kiss! They paid off the kiss, and now they're going backwards to build up to a kiss that he already got. It's like Einstein's book in this. You know, time moves in two directions. Theory of relativity. Yeah, that's the way they book. The Miz and Logan Paul came out. They're both from uh, Cleveland. And uh, and Miz cuts a babyface promo. And I'm here from Cleveland. We're Cleveland guys. They still hated Logan Paul, but they, they cheered Miz initially. And then and then Jerry Lawler comes out because they announced Jerry Lawler was going to be on the show. What's Jerry Lawler going to do, we asked. And uh, turns out he came out to say, you know, one day I used to live here. I used to live here back in the day. And I grew up in, uh, you know, I, uh, Lorraine. Everyone goes, hey, Lorraine. And Amherst. Oh, man, he's repping Amherst. And then he says, you know, it'd be great. It'd be great if Cleveland, Ohio hosted WrestleMania. God bless him, Miz, but he's a man of facts. He's like, brother, it ain't going to be a WrestleMania in Cleveland. And so they start booing him. And, you know, Logan Paul's kind of like, what's this guy being so mean to Cleveland for? 
And so Miz walks out on Cleveland, and Logan Paul kind of follows behind him, but he's all confused. So, yes, I do think in the end the idea here is, uh, you know, Logan Paul's going to ultimately beat up Miz. I'm going to try and turn the guy babyface, try and rehab the guy. So good luck with that one. We had Tommaso Ciampa and Braun Breaker do an interview. They're facing uh, Ziggler and Rude again. And that was, in fact, the next match. It's Braun Breaker and Ciampa versus Ziggler and Rude. This was a match on NXT last week that I was so excited for. And the finish last week was Tommaso Ciampa pinned Dolph Ziggler. I was like, what in God's name? So then they added Ciampa to the three-way. So I didn't like it, but I could at least say, all right, whatever. You add, you you beat the guy, so now you're also going to get a, a chance. Even though you didn't beat the champion, you pinned the challenger, which now makes you whatever. So then they have the rematch again here. And I was like, I would have been mad if it wasn't so preposterous. Dolph Ziggler gets pinned again. He got pinned by Braun Breaker. Rolled up and pinned him. Actually, no, it was his finish. He pressed him and he power slammed him and he pinned him in the middle of the ring. And at that point, I was like, bro, whatever. Like, I, I can't possibly care. And then, you know, Ziggler then has to cut the tough guy promo. Oh, I'll get you tomorrow. I'm like, has, this business is so past me by sometimes. Like, I could not possibly care less about this. They have done everything. When they... When they... Put up when they put together that tag match for NXT two weeks ago. I couldn't wait for this tag match. I couldn't wait. And they were building to Braun Breaker versus Ziggler. I was like, oh man, here we go. They have done everything wrong to make me not care at all about this match. And my God. Yeah, Dave's like, well, you know, Ziggler's probably going to win the title. Oh, wow. So the guy who never, ever could win on the main roster goes to NXT and does a promo about how he can never win. He then proceeds to do jobs two shows in a row leading to the... And now he's going to be the champion? Wow. Well, man, you know what's going to turn around NXT ratings is having a total dork as the NXT champion. Because, boy, they've made this guy an uber dork with their horrible booking. So I, I guess I did get mad after all. Omos squashed Apollo Crews, and they set up a stare down with Omos and Aziz. Because you know they're probably going to have an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So you're telling me that people are actually going to get on the WrestleMania card? Wow. Because this whole show was about Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins not having a path to WrestleMania. They're not, you know, they're not going to be on WrestleMania. That's what they told me, a, a viewer. You know, these guys ain't going to be able to get on this WrestleMania show, there's no clear path. There's no slot for Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens on a two-night WrestleMania. Did you know that? And that's what they told me. Then we had an Edge segment, which was just like, whatever. This guy's a great promo. He sure wasn't tonight. I don't even know what he was rambling on about. He's, he's at the top of the mountain of omnipotence, and it's a phenomenal view. And then he just disappeared. All right. Well, if I'm supposed to, bu if I'm supposed to boo the guy, I was booing this promo. Kevin Owens has no path to WrestleMania. Seth Rollins has an interview. He has no path to WrestleMania. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan beat Zelina and Carmella. These women's tag titles are so... I guess I hated the end of the show now that I think about it. These, these belts are so prestigious that in the middle of this match, Carmella leaves the ring to go flirt with her boyfriend. Zelina is left alone. Rhea kills her with a riptide, pins her, and so now it's a three-way for the women's titles at WrestleMania. Hmm. We had uh, Finn Balor beating Austin Theory. <laughs> They're just doing this match, and then Damian Priest just ran in for the DQ. Because that's what they do. And then the main event was the segment with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens comes out, talks about how this show is stupendous, and he says, you know, I've been, uh, I've been running down Texas... I could choose a blowhard like JBL, but eh, nobody would care. And Booker T, that guy's a hypocrite. He was he claims he's from Texas, but he worked most of his career as Harlem Heat. He ain't going to be on my show. And as far as Shawn Michaels goes, as a proud Canadian, 
And out of great respect for Brett the Hitman Hart, that guy ain't going to be on my show. But there's a guy, he says, who's probably let himself go, drinking too much beer, can't even walk to the ring, much less have a match. I want this man to be on the KO show. I'm going to beat him down. Stone Cold Steve Austin! And then just, just to screw with the live audience, they hit Stone Cold's music and this place goes crazy. But there's no Stone Cold. There's just a graphic on the screen. And that's how the show went off the air. Yep, that's how the show went off the air. But you know them fans are just going to take it because that's what they do. So anyway, that was Raw. Great first hour. And then, uh, hey, if I'm giving the, the recommendation, watch hour one. Turn program off. That's the best way to go about doing this. So there you go. That is, uh, that's the latest on the road to WrestleMania, my friends. Let's see for a minute here what is in the mailbag. As far as says, I was at Rampage Live Friday. I can confirm it was so much better live. I wish they ran it live more often. The camera seat work seems like it's getting more and more questionable, however. Missing spots that those of us there live got to see firsthand. Well, I guess you got to take it or leave it. Like, you want a couple of missed spots or do you want 8,000 camera cuts? There's a thing on Twitter I saw, by the way, from the WWE video game. Where they did the camera cutting in the middle of this video game. I cried. Back in a moment, Observer Live. And I hope this isn't someone trolling, but this person here says, Brian, I can tell you what Mike Sempervivi is doing instead of the show today. He is busy studying for his appearance on the first ever Let's Get Ready Network Wrestling Trivia Brawl on YouTube tonight at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Semp is putting all the other competitors on notice. Is that true? Is that true, Dagan? Dagan says that was him. Mm-hmm. I guess that is true. Well, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. That's not head-to-head. Okay. Well, if you want to watch that then, that'll be tonight. Let's Get Ready Network Wrestling Trivia Brawl on YouTube, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. And then later on tonight, at 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern, only for our top-tier YouTube subscribers and those watching twitch.tv slash F4W video. You must be a subscriber to either of them, but it will simulcast. Our ode to Rob Bartlett edition of the Brian, Vinny, Granny, and Craig show. Song contests, poetry, a review of the final Raw that Rob Bartlett appears on, Raw 13 on the Peacock. That's going to be tonight, and it's going to be a good time, so don't miss it. If you miss it, unlike if you get a cameo from me, F4W Online, you will regret it. So make sure you check it out tonight. And check out those cameos as well. F4W Online. They've been flooding in today. And I don't have as much fun anywhere as I have doing cameos. So check them out, my friends. And with that, we're out of time here today. Landstorm coming up in an hour. 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. Only for our top-tier YouTube subscribers. Of course, the Wrestling Observer Radio Show last night, if you want to check that one out. And uh, we're here every day, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sports Byline USA, YouTube, Twitch, a million different ways to listen to the show. So head up there and, and check it out, everybody, and, uh, and we'll talk more about all this tomorrow. So thanks, Mike, as always, callers and listeners, all of our top-tier YouTube subscribers, all of the Twitch homies, Dom, who's waiting forever to play this damn music. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.